الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا يا الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما all thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek His help and we seek His refuge in Him from our sins and the evil of our own selves. Whomever Allah guides is guided indeed. Whoever led Himself astray would have no guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amma ba'd. In Ahsan al Kalami Kalam Allah, Khair al Hadi, Hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sharru al Kuru Muhtata tuha wa kulla muhtata tuha bid'a wa kulla bid'a tuha dalala wa kulla dalala tuha dalala tuha dalala tuha وصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله ومراقبته في السر والعلن فإنه سبحانه وتعالى رسول الله تقول Dear brothers and sisters in Islam We live in a very past, fast-paced life To the extent that it trickles down into everything we do We are in a hurry to do anything and everything Funny thing is, and I'm sure everybody falls in the same court My kids always tell me, why do we have to do everything quick? Get ready for school quickly because you're going to be late for school. Get eat, finish your dinner quickly because you have to go to sleep. Do your homework quickly so you can do this. So everything is quick. Subhanallah. Even on the weekends when you're supposed to be relaxed, get up early. You gotta, you gotta go to a soccer practice. You gotta go to a game practice. Let's finish quickly, quickly, quickly. Everything goes quickly. The thing is. We tend to forget that everything else gets involved, that we're involved with gets pushed under that. Even Ibadah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm sure everybody can relate to this. We really, I think it's the lifestyle of, subhanAllah, it's ma'alam and sa'ah, that things are running much faster than that So the question is, a simple question, how often do we pray and our minds in somewhere else because we're going through things quickly? And I'm sure all of us can relate to this. Today's topic Today's is very topic simple, is very simple. And, I'm sure and I'm sure everyone here everyone already knows this, knows this. and I'm not saying anything new, but anything I'm going to say, say, you already know. It's, it's just a reminder. reminder. However, we However, tend we to forget, forget in the windmill of life that like we keep running into, everybody, everybody would ask you, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, just running around with my head cut off, like, you know what? So, subhanAllah, we all fall into this. Again, so what I'm saying today is not something that you don't know, you already know, but it's just a reminder for all of us. I was sitting with some friends over the weekend, and this topic came up. And subhanAllah, it hit me that even though we do it a lot, we tend to forget about it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Ar-Rahman rahim Maliki yawm al-deen. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqeen. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. سبحان الله. How many times do we read this surah? A lot. This is today's topic. It's as simple as that. It's remembering surah al-Fatiha. We read it more than 17 times a day. Yet we forget the meaning behind it. From doing things fast, fast, fast. We just just run through it quickly. So what I'm trying to do today is to remind myself and everybody else that we need to try to pause for a second and try to read the surah more slowly. And we'll just go through a couple of things that I'm sure all of us know already, but it's just a reminder. Al-Fatiha is the first surah of the Qur'an. It's a Meccan surah. It has seven verses. And the surah, this surah is, has so many other names, I'm just going to mention a few. Ummu Kitab, Al-Shafiyya, Al-Wafiyya, Al-Kafiyya, Sab al So there's multiple names to it from the, the, the level of that surah. It's also narrated from Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu told one of the Sahaba, I will teach you the best surah in Qur'an. And he started reciting al Fatiha. So what is the secret behind this surah? Why is it so important to us? Why do we read it 17 times a day? 
The key is, according to the majority of scholars, this surah contains a broad range of meanings and the teachings of the Qur'an. It deals with the fundamentals of Islam and its branches. It, uh, uh, its branches. Faith, worship, legislation, belief in the last day, belief in Allah, qualities of Allah, attributes of Allah, how to uh, ask Allah for guidance. So it goes through all these things in just a short, short, short. So the Fatiha includes all these aspects. The main three goals that the ulama have, have narrowed it down to is faith, worship, and way of life. So if we examine the surah to talk about faith, al-aqidah, alhamdulillah, ya rabbil alameen, ar-rahman ar-rahim, which is going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maliki yawm yawm So proving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being one. Al-ibadah, which is worship. So it's as simple as that, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we can ask sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the way of life, manhaj hayya, sirat al mustaqim. We ask for guidance, for the, the, the straight path. Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim, what kind? And who should we deal with? Who's our friends? An'amta alayhim, ghayr al maghdubi alayhim, wal al daadim. So you're categorizing your lifestyle, who should, should I be associated with? So everything that we do revolves or describes in the Fatiha, if we look closely to it. Another important aspect of the Fatiha, it's reminding us of the core of our religion. Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shukr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, which that's what it starts with. Al-ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, iyyaka na'abudu wa iyyaka nasta'in, goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And something critical of this, it's not individual. It's not, it's you, not if you, you pray, pray the surah, surah by yourself, yourself you, say, you say, Iyaka Abud, it's collective. It, it deals with the community. the community. We're all one group. Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in. So it's so not it's about, about individuals. Individual. So, so that's something else that it teaches us. As Sahaba Salihah, having good companions, Surat al Ladina and Amta Alayhi, that's who you want to be associated with. It's a way of life. Who do you want to be associated with? And remember the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Istiqamah, being on the straight path. Ihdina as-salat al-mustaqeem. The day of judgment. Malik yawm al So we read this 17 times a day. If you think about each ayah, it reminds us of this every time we read it. And the, the unity of the ummah when it comes to na'bud and nasta'in because it, it's in the plural text. Uh, it also teaches us how to make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It starts by praising. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. You praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make tana on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you start making the dua. And it teaches us something else about dua. You don't make dua for yourself. You make dua for everybody else. Because if you make dua for everybody else, the malaika will confirm your dua. And inshallah will get accepted. So when you make dua, you make a dua collectively. Uh, some of the scholars say that the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed uh, over a hundred books and these books were combined into three books of Zabur, Tawrah, and Anjil. These three books were then combined into Al-Qur'an and the Qur'an was combined into Al-Fatiha and then it all boils down to Iyyaka Na'bud wa Iyyaka So that's how critical this surah is. It also it teaches also us who our friends is. Who do you want to be associated with? Do you want to be associated with the Maghdoub Alayhi? No, you want to be with, with, with the righteous people. And then, and then it also it goes, goes a step further. further. If you look at it's how it's how ordered, it's ordered, it says uh, the last two verses, غير المغضوب عليه. And then what's the surah after Al-Fatiha? Al-Baqarah. It describes who are Al-Maghdoub Alayhi. وَلَلْضَالِي. The surah after that. <coughs> Al Amran <coughs> describes <coughs> who that is. So all this is in the Fatiha. Fatiha starts in the beginning. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That's the first part, right? What does the Quran finish with? Ness. So start Rabbil Alameen ends with Ness. So this Quran, this message is for everybody. The entire human, human race, race and for anything else that we don't know, that's why it's Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Anything else that we don't even know. In the second part of the khutbah, I'm just going to go and mention one hadith that will help us try to focus on this surah. May Allah bless you and me with the ability to implement the Holy Qur'an and the Sunnah of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I say this and I ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to grant us His forgiveness.
Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. So as I mentioned earlier, this khutbah is just a reminder. You know the topic, it's just to remind us. So I'm just going to end the khutbah with this hadith qudsi. The hadith qudsi goes like this. And this is, um, hadith qudsi means hadith from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قسمت الصلاة بيني وبين بيني وبين بيني وبين عبد نصفين. So Allah subhanahu wa taala split the salah into two pieces. Now let's listen to this part, the following part. What he defines as salah. ولعبد ما سأل. So whatever my servant will ask, I'm gonna grant him. فإذا قال العبد. So if you as a servant say الحمد لله رب العالمين. Allah subhanahu wa taala will respond. حمدني عبد. My servant has. وإذا قال العبد الرحمن الرحيم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى أثنى علي عبدي. So Allah responds. You say a verse. Allah responds. You say a verse. Allah responds. وإذا قال مالك يوم الدين قال عز وجل مجدني عبدي. So each verse you say, Allah responds to it. فإذا قال عبد اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى هذا لعبدي ولعبد ما سأل This is to my servant and he's gonna get what he asked for. Now how many of us read الفاتحة with this in mind? We know it. We all know it. It's just we tend to forget. And the intent is to remind ourselves because we're humans. I forgot what I had for breakfast. That happens to everyone. So we need to remind each other. And it's Allah. This was in the conversation. We have. It, it was mentioned in the, in, in the gathering of friends for two seconds. But it triggered, you know what? It's been a while since I read the Fatiha this way. And looked at it this way. So next time, inshallah, the goal, the practical application, and then I'm going to end the photo this way. The practical application is, next time you read the Fatiha, just remember that uh, there's a conversation. Omar Abdul Aziz is that he used to say that when he would read it, say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, and he would pause for a second. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahman, and he would pause for a second. And they would ask him, why do you do that? He said, Astamta Rabbi Rabbi. He would pause it, because the Hadith Khutsi, that's what it says. Allah would respond. So, so we are in a dialogue, dialogue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how beautiful it is for us to pause for a second, remember the meaning of each ayah, and remember that Allah is responding to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَغْنَتُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ جَمِيعًا إِنَّ هُوَ لَفُرْ رَحِيمٌ اللهم انت قلت قول الحق ان اللهم لا يكتب صلوا على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا على اله وسلموا تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم اللهم تقبل منا الصيام والصلاه والقيام والركوع والسجود وجميع اعمالنا واجعل خالصا لوجهك الكريم اللهم اجمعنا مع المسلمين الصالحين يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبلنا من النار اللهم لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا اكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الاسلام ومصر المصلافين في جميع مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين اللهم احفظ ابناءنا وبناتنا واجعلهم من المتقين اللهم اجعل خير اعمالنا خواتيمها خير ايامنا يوم ان نلقاه اللهم اسقنا من يد نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شربة هنيئة مليئة لا نضع بعدها ابدا اللهم اتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الاخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار واخذ دعواهم الحمد لله رب العالمين ان الله يأمر العدل والاحسان وايتاء القربة وينهى عن شيء وبنت الوربخ يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله اذكركم واستغفروه يغفر لكم ما في الله